Well, tonight it's all about the golden goose, and what golden gooses do is bring us golden eggs. And golden eggs, we're going to refer to them tonight as, as new sales, new customers, new opportunities in business. And to have uh, those opportunities come your way, you can actually kind of make it happen if you have a golden goose marketing campaign. And that's kind of what we're going to build our program around tonight. Uh, we want to start up our business, and we want to jump start it if we can, uh, so that we not only can do business on the internet or online or on Main Street or mobily, uh, we'll look at all those different aspects tonight. My name is Steve Carver. I'm speaking to you from Dunn, North Carolina, my presentation number 1091 uh, on November 14th. So we're in the middle of November. It's amazing how fast this year has gone by, isn't it? Let me tell you, I'm not a lawyer and not a CPA. Uh, I am a fellow that's been in business for 64 years now, learned a lot, and trying to share lots of lessons with you. First thing I'll always say is, before you make a serious decision in your business or personal life affecting your security or finances, I strongly suggest you get a second opinion or talk to someone that's got some sense and that will be uh, confidential for you and cares about your well-being. And one of the best places that you can find related to business issues are the small business centers in the community colleges in North Carolina. Peace Center has a director, and we're sponsored tonight by the best director in the state, Ruthie Holloman, who's brand new at her job as director, but seasoned as someone that's been used to helping entrepreneurs. So we're very fortunate to have Ruthie in our area and working with us uh, and working for you at no charge. And she is just heck, uh, heck bent to do whatever she can to make sure your business gets up and running and help you any way she can. If you want to give her a call and set up an appointment, and I highly recommend it, 252-451-8344. I am recording this session tonight, and I'll send you a copy of the recording if I have your email address, address so that you can go back at your own time. It's a YouTube recording. Stop the screen at any time. Uh, look at the, uh, the slides. Take your time making notes. So I hope the recordings help you as well because I do pack a lot of information into these programs, and especially tonight. And it's so important, the marketing aspects of a, of a small business. Ruth's office is over in the William S. Carver, and that's no kin to me that I'm aware of. I'll check it out. Education building uh, on the campus in Nash, in, uh, Nash County, just outside of Rocky Mount. Thank you all for going steady with me for several weeks. We're in our third session now. And look forward to three after tonight, three more. Uh, we have real good attendance and staying with it. So thank you so much for being dedicated to uh, to the series and to getting your business up and running. After tonight, you'll have a few um, um, two weeks almost uh, time to work on your homework assignments. And I was just telling several of you earlier uh, during the two week period, no matter what day it is, as you're working on them. Uh, keep checking your email because I'll probably be sending you an email about every day if I think of something that might help you. And vice versa, if you want to start sending your homework back to me, uh, you can do that on any day, and I uh, will welcome uh, getting it from you. So don't feel like you have to wait till after Thanksgiving to send an email. Matter of fact, it'd be a lot easier on me uh, to get it to me as soon as you can. That way I'll have a chance to look it over and respond back, make any comments to you. So tonight it's about marketing, and when we get back together on November 30th, it'll be to ha uh, how we're going to put this marketing information together up and running to, uh, to help customers find us. Um, as I promised last week, I, I started a new marketing campaign last week, and I'll be sharing with you right many uh, samples of what we've been doing in my business, uh, not to try to sell you any equipment, but to show you basically how I'm doing it myself and you may find some uh, tips that will help you plan your uh, marketing campaigns as well. So we've got a full schedule left after the night. We still don't have six uh, webinars for, to balance out the year. Uh, again, tomorrow night we'll have an uh, interesting program on digging deep into how to find and hire the best employees. 
and also the really cool uh, uh, strategy of becoming a, a dream manager you know, not only you see some dreams come true, but the folks around you. So let me invite you right now to join us tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, if you like, in the other series. Lots of study guides I sent to you today. Those that uh, had your email addresses, I'll resend them tomorrow to not only you, but also the new folks that are with us tonight. Uh, these are very important. I suggest you look them over real, real good. Uh, one especially or a couple of them, is the Creating Your Mission, Vision, and Promise Statements uh, uh, handout that's there. It's got good tips in it, uh, lots of information to help you do that. And also, you've got a sheet that's related to your homework assignments. And through doing all your homework is the way that you will uh, earn a graduation certificate. You don't have to do any of the homework to get a completion certificate. <clears throat> this help pass the quiz and, and attend uh, at least five of the six sessions. The directors always uh, will appreciate that if you will fill out the survey that the network, small business network, sends to you uh, uh, by email, usually the day after a webinar, please fill those out and send them back in. Uh, tell them how much you're enjoying the program or not enjoying it. Hopefully you are and any comments, uh, that's important for them to help uh, uh, monitor how many people are coming and going and what they think of the series. And this is a basis for continued funding. So please fill out those surveys if you will. My job, as you've already seen, if you've been with us, is to be assertive and do my very best to motivate you uh, to go to the next step. But I always will say, I want you to do it at your own pace that you're comfortable with I want you to be a happy camper, but just know that I'm looking forward and encouraging you all I can. I've got two uh, challenges for you related to Facebook tonight. <laughs> Excuse me. One is to uh, find the Facebook page for our academy, the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates. You will find that page and join the, the group because there you'll be able to see your pictures and information on your uh, progress. Uh, uh, right away uh, after the night session and as you send the information in to me I'll start posting it at the Academy website and then uh, hopefully it'll create business for you and you, we all can see how all we're doing so looking forward to doing that but you need to find that page Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates. Secondly I hadn't mentioned this before tonight in any of my previous sessions However, I've decided it's such a, a, a good marketing tool <clears throat> that I want to recommend that we all use it. Because if you simply have a Facebook page, then you're able to uh, participate at the Facebook Marketplace. Many of you probably already are aware of this because it shows up as you're uh, looking at your account. <clears throat> but maybe you haven't been there and actually sold anything. But this is, is another freebie that gets you on the Internet and doing things uh, the right way will really help you. So on your Facebook page, you see where the arrows are going to that little house looking thing, that's Marketplace. If you'll click on that icon, you'll be able to start immediately listing anything you have to sell and, and, uh, and, and to go for it. And uh, I suggest that you give it a try. Uh, surely there's something around the house you've got you can put up on there just to, to learn how the system works. Uh, if you are already in business and ready to start selling products, you can do that. Uh, notice that first item listed there, Potato Digger uh, Speedo. I just posted that about an hour ago, so I could give you all a copy of it. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm doing it myself. It took me uh, less than 15 minutes to, uh, to post that, and I've never done one myself before. So uh, check it out. Uh, I found it to be so easy that I will be loading it up uh, in the futures uh, because it was uh, really good. And what spurred me to go there was at lunch today, I was <clears throat> uh, talking with an old friend of mine who told me he was just selling a lot, a lot of uh, used parts and other items on Marketplace and said, Steve, I'm running my business right there with free marketing through Facebook. So I couldn't let that go without sharing it with you guys. So that, that's a challenge for you to check out at Facebook. 
Well, let's talk about uh, people going the extra mile, and we've got so many of you doing it. Uh, thank you, first of all, for keep coming back, uh, and we're, we're glad to have you. I'll keep a record of your attendance, and remember that you need to attend five of these six sessions, and the last one to qualify for your certificate uh, and for your graduation. So I'm um, keeping up with you and looking forward to monitoring the process as we go. All right, so Sarita, our, uh, she's the senior member of the Academy of Associates. She's a master of six. Uh, she's been with us and working hard at keeping our certificates coming in. And Sarita, now, I, well, I'm going to be asking you all to make videos, and this is a, a sample of Sarita's first video, and uh, she did it and sent it in. So let's just take a look at that. Let me ask you to turn your microphones up. And sometimes these videos don't monitor too, don't aren't shared real well uh, you know, uh, through the um, platform. But at least I want you to show you how much participation we're getting. Hi, my name is Sarita Sampson. I am the owner of Loving Each Graphic here in Clinton, North Carolina. I can help you with your business card. I can create you with. Uh oh. To help you create your logo. I can also do search general programs and flyers. Any of your graphic design needs, I can I can handle. Um, I also am the owner of Taylor's Creation, where we can help you build your business website, and I can also be your personal assistant, helping you with um, posting your products, helping you post your products online, helping you set up your uh, Facebook business page. All that. So Sarita uh, gave us a real good video that was real good for openers, and certainly did appreciate it. Uh, now, our in the spring we have got three session three sessions going on this year: spring, uh, summer, and and uh, winter. And in our spring session, our first in class winter was. Uh, Vanessa McIntosh. Let me show you what all Vanessa started from scratch. Now, she had been in business for about four years, but it was dead in the water, not hardly anything going on. She wasn't promoting it hardly at all, and it never used her picture or voice in marketing. About three weeks ago, she called me on the phone and just could not believe how much her business had grown. She said she might even have to hire an extra employee this fall because it was grown, and she she gave credit to the uh, to the program that you're in uh, to help her get up and running. So let's look at some of the material that Vanessa did, and you might want to use some of the same techniques. First of all, she came up with a fantastic logo, uh, good message in it, and a good name of her business, Five Alarm Logistics. She's located over in Burnsville, the Spruce Pines area of the mountains. She deals in uh, in cosmetics. Uh, she uh, started marketing those uh, on her website and at Facebook. Uh, her business now is, is uh, uh, doing uh, caps and T-shirts, uh, different types of logos. She's designing, designing her own designs, which I know that some of y'all are into design. She sets up pop-ups and booths. Uh, she got a, a, a really good website with a, a great web page. She did get a good, my business on Google account uh, during the series uh, when it was going forward and started getting business from that almost immediately. She did a, a, um, a QR code so that she could put that on some of her uh, uh, material and printed matter so that folks could zero in on certain web pages. And let me tell you, this is basically free. You can do a QR code for for zero money and then use it as a marketing tool. Uh, she's got a, a beautiful little family. There she is with one of the little babies. But her main business is selling these uh, these uh, challenge coins for different organizations uh, like police departments, uh, military units, hunting clubs, auto clubs, different things like that. And uh, that's, that's the main thing she does. Hey, I'm Vanessa McIntosh. I'm the owner of Follow Alarm Logistics. Five Alarm is one of the very few coin manufacturers in the United States, and we're located in Yancey County, North Carolina. 
all these products, including coins, caps, shirts, and more, are great for gifts, awards, promotions. Hey, y'all, I'm Vanessa McIntosh. I'm the owner of Final Alarm. Now, let me mention to you that Vanessa did a raw video with no graphics and no scrolling, sent it in to me and one of our associates on the academy, one of your fellow classmates, enhanced the video for her, put music, put the uh, scrolling lines and such as that. So if you'll do your part in getting that video uh, to me and you're ready to start doing business, we'll do all we can to help you turn a simple video into a good marketing tool. Vanessa told me that within three days after she posted this video at her website and, and sent it out to her uh, potential customers, she started getting orders immediately and it has never slowed down. So uh, keep that in mind. Hey y'all, I'm Vanessa McIntosh. I'm the owner of Five Alarm Logistics. Five Alarm is one of the very few toy manufacturers in the United States. And we're located in Yankee County, North Carolina. All these products, including coins, caps, shirts, and more, are you even added a second voice. and promotions of businesses. All first responder squads, all law enforcement groups, military units and squads, athletic teams, and by the way, great for all businesses. Mm, by the way. Appreciation. Don't wait. Place your orders today and let us know when you need delivery. Thank you for choosing to buy alarm with us today. I'm so proud of her. That was a great, uh, great work that she did. If I can figure out how to make the slide go forward, we'll move on. There we go. And first in our class, in our uh, first in class in our fall class, uh, is Latoya, and she's back with us even now. Uh, so let me brag on Latoya a little bit. She uh, basically got started about eight eight weeks ago, and show you what all she's accomplished so far. Came up with a great name for a new business, self-care, wear, and healing. Uh, good images all over the internet now. Uh, uh, good, uh, good colors, design, uh, promoting her business. Uh, came up with a great statement, so a, a, a basic statement on her business, a vision and core values, a mission, vision, and promise statements. Uh, got them in, sent them in, and now uh, sharing them with her potential customers. These are good ways to create confidence, not only in yourself, but also help customers have confidence in you. And I'm just so proud of Latoya. She got her business cards up and running and sent them in very good business cards. And also Latoya gave, is giving us a video. Company called Self Care, Self Aware and Healing. I look forward to uh, inviting you to my home and introducing you to wellness whether it be skincare, body care, anything that you may need, I'm here for you. It's time to take care of you for a change. And I got you. I'll see you soon. Bye. Latoya, that's wonderful. Time to take care of you for a change. And I got you. I just love that uh, statement. And uh, so much appreciate the hard work you're doing. And hope it turns into helping you make some money. I know you're having fun doing it. Ned Jones has been with us. If she stopped with us yet, she'll probably come in tonight. She's over in Chicopee and just decided to name her business Blessed Bookkeepers. She'll be doing virtual bookkeeping service. And Sharika, Bob Mitchell, and Roanoke Rapids, uh, you are with us. So glad to have you on board. And look here, I found you on Facebook, copied some information, and so glad to see you're already active there. And I'm uh, looking forward to watching you really kickstart this and start getting a lot of orders on the different products that you're offering. Uh, uh, the craft creations made for you, uh, that's a nice design, certainly pretty, good colors and unique. So congratulations, uh, keep the good work coming on. And uh, we've now got, uh, well, there you go, she, uh, other uh, videos, you've already got some videos running, I think that's why I put that up. Katina, uh, thank you for your work and for what all you've got going on. Uh, we appreciate your efforts. Looking forward to learning a lot more about your business. We see that you're a certified food manager, food service manager. And that's a good start. And hey, let's, let's uh, get some more stuff going on to get your business up and running. And how about Regina? Regina's with us tonight. So proud of you uh, in Elizabeth Town. 
uh, with a, a new business already registered, Regina O L L C. And I, I went on the internet and came up with a, just some uh, graphics maybe to promote your business and looking forward to see what you come up with. But Regina's gonna design high-end fashions. And so I'm looking so forward to, uh, to seeing some actual products and, and information there that we can help you uh, get some business from that. Thank you so much for your basic business plan. I really like this. It's so good for a brand new starter. It's, it's quite simple. Uh, uh, gets you uh, thinking in terms of, of, of uh, what you're going to do with your business. And now when we add the budgeting aspect to this, and I sent uh, an email that I sent to you earlier, uh, uh, a budgeting a way to do your budgeting uh, and combine it with your uh, initial business plan, you should be well off and running. Hey, Darcy, always glad to show your picture and you're working towards your uh, getting your florist up, florist up and running. Uh, great graphics that you sent. I uh, appreciate a wonderful mission statement that you did that ended up with our customer service is like a warm, warm hug. That is just absolutely fantastic and will certainly turn customers on just like it does me. So thank you for sharing that. Also, uh, she sent in a really nice testimonial in appreciation for the SBC and for the Academy for trying to help help folks. So thank you for that as well. Jim Williams, I don't think is back with us so yet tonight. He'll probably come in earlier. Uh, down in Williamson has been joining us nightly. Uh, Tim's got some good images uh, on the internet. Uh, he's a Legal Shield type fellow that uh, represents Legal Shield, and they've got a really good program. And I put this slide up just because a good uh, image of their mobile page, which is all about hitting that one error there and making a phone call. That's a powerful more, uh, mobile page that. Uh, pay attention to that because uh, they're a huge corporation and they recognize the fact and the power of a mobile page. So when you come up on that uh, mobile page, that is encouraging you to make a call and to start doing some business. So certainly appreciate that. Tim has done a wonderful job of promoting his business on social media. When you click in his name and legal seal, uh, uh, five different ads come up on the front page and that's, that's pretty uh, significant. And that's what we all want to strive for. So, Tim, thank you very much for the work you're doing and look forward to helping you do more if you'd like. So, everybody else, I'm waiting for you to send me more information, send me some pictures. Uh, let me help um, you um, uh, market your business. And it all starts with, number one, you have to get past the fact of not having your picture on the Internet because in my teaching with the Go Go News campaign, we're after not only making a sale, more importantly, we're after creating relationships with customers. And as a small business, you're going to have a lot more success if they can identify with you as an individual and move forward. So uh, let me have the information and we'll certainly help do all we can to share that with the world. Well, number one thing, just like Sarita had sent to us, try to get me that introductory video and once you do that, you'll be well on your way. <clears throat> okay, we're back to the 40 drill skills. Uh, let's see where we're picking up tonight. Again, you've got a handout that's got them all there, and I'd really like for you to take your time during the next couple of weeks to look, look at those videos that are mentioned in the handout. Uh, click on them and, and, uh, and go through the 40 drill skills. Starting out with number 17 tonight, uh, positive cash flow. What is cash flow? That's the money coming in and out of your business. Everybody pretty much understands that. But I want to take it to the highest level possible. As we get started, cash flow is our heartbeat. Without it, we're in, we're in trouble. And we have to pay attention to it and always uh, make it move to, to improve our cash flow. I'll even take it to the point that I would say positive cash flow is when anybody, anywhere, comes into my space either on the internet, exchanging emails, or face-to-face, -face. if they've got available money in their pocket and an interest in what I'm selling, selling, I don't call that positive cash flow because they're in my space. And it's up to me to use my skills and motivation to encourage them to give me my money out of their pocket. And if they don't do it and leave, 
I consider that negative cash flow because I just see it going away. Someone else is going to have access to it before I do. So as you start your business and as you start creating opportunities to speak with customers, let this, let this sink in a little bit. Let it sink in a little bit. So indeed, indeed you'll, you'll understand how important it is that making that deal is always on your mind. A, B, C, always be closing. Have that back in your mindset that cash flow is going to keep your business alive, help you pay your bills. Take it or leave it when merchandising, I think, is a major mistake if you have any other options you can put into play. Because if we're saying to our customer, take it or leave it, that or leave it is encouraging them to go on down the street and shop somewhere else. Now, they may come back, but the only reason they're going to come back is if you had a cheaper price. And we need to, not just to be in business to have the cheapest price. We need to be in business to create repeat business with a lot of different ways, best customer service, best understanding, best relationship. So keep it in mind, I will say a lot many times that we are not going to do take it or leave it business if we can help it. The three times rule we'll talk about a lot tonight, but basically what that's saying for folks that have never bought and sold items, if you don't know how to price your products, using the three times rule will keep you safe. And that is whatever you pay for it, when you sell it, multiply, uh, multiply, multiply your cost times three, that way you'll have a chance to, to uh, uh, make one third of your money to cover your cost up front another third to cover your uh, overhead, and the last third for profit and paying taxes. Uh, we'll get into that uh, more in just a little while. The 27 times rule is going to teach us that a customer has to see our presentation, to hear us talk, to get a business card, to look at a web page at least nine times before we'll have a chance to close a meaningful deal with them. And they will miss your seeing your ad or what you've done marketing-wise at least two out of three times opportunities they have just because of nature. And if they're going to miss seeing our ads two out of three times, but they have to see it at least nine times, that means we need to plan our marketing campaigns with the 27 times rule. Putting ads out there 27 times in order for the customer to see it nine times. So we'll go into detail with this one a little later as well. We have to keep the customer talking and having that relationship go forward, back and forth, for us to close important deals. Uh, just take it or leave it, that's either yes or no. But we want to encourage talking. We want to have a negotiation. We want to hear what they have to say and see how we can find common ground on our prices so we'll have a chance to make more profit. And I wrote a little book on this. It's available at Amazon. It sells for $2, I think. But anyway, it's called Yes If No But Negotiating. Yes If No But. Now, some of you were with us last week when we talked about this in the other webinar. But it's important that you keep the conversation going. So if a customer says to you, makes you an offer, then you might, you'll be, instead of just saying, no, I can't do that, I'm suggesting that you say, well, thank you for making me that offer. And yes, I can take you up on that if I don't have to put those new tires on that trailer. Or... Thank you for that offer. No, I'm sorry, I can't take it. But if I don't put those new tires on the trailer, I can do it. So you're giving the option with yes, if, no, but. That is opening the door for you to make counter offers to keep the conversation alive. And as long as you're talking with a customer, you've got a chance to close the deal. Number 22 and 23 kind of go together. The question is, what is the most important web page that you will have in your whole business? 
web pages. And the most important web page that you'll have is your mobile page, the mobile page. That is the web page that people see when they find you on their telephone. That page has to be very, very powerful. The second most important page are the, are the uh, web pages where people go to or that you send them to to consider buying your product. We're going to call those from here on out landing pages. That's where people land, like land in an airplane, to consider buying your product. And if that page encourages someone to buy, then you don't have a chance to, to make some money. But if that page simply shows pictures and don't have some buzzwords in it and encourages them to move, then it's just a picture page. And picture pages don't make you money. They may make you feel good and have people ooh and ah about what you've got. But I want you to make sales and to jazz those pages up so that people will ooh and ah and then click and buy something from you. Then it will become a landing page. And we'll get real deep in that in our first session after Thanksgiving. So the question to you is, why do customers come back the second, third time, year after year? Why do people keep coming back? Well, 40% of the reasons people come back to you are customer service. The details that you learn here, uh, uh, your product knowledge, uh, how good things look, uh, the, your uh, ability to close a sale, uh, if you got a bricks and mortar store, your lighting or your parking lot, or how's your presentation, your sales skills, that's customer service. But you know what? People come back to you for more often because of hospitality than they do anything else. And no matter what business you're in, you don't have to have a cruise ship or a restaurant or a hotel for hospitality to be important. Every business relies on hospitality. If you've got it and understand it and know how to use it, you've got a greater chance of keeping customers coming back. So what is hospitality in that standpoint? It's how customers feel about doing business with you, how they feel like you treat them, how you, how you feel like you want them to come back. And we can do these things with lots of different messages that, as we talk to our customers. And in our Wednesday night sessions, we'll get real deep in that. So if you're able to tune back in on a Wednesday night session, uh, we're going to have some uh, uh, special digging deep into how you can make these work for you better. So let's have a little question here. I hope you all have a, a, a device that you can see the screen here. That's a world uh, atlas type map there, graphic. And that arrow is pointing to basically where we are on that map, but we can't see much about us, can we? We don't even know what state we're in there, but we kind of know that. And you know, the, the World Wide Web covers the whole world. So my challenge in sharing with you guys is what skills can we apply and strategies to help the whole world actually zoom in on where we are on this map? And can we do it? Can we have a reasonable expectation that we can do that? So how do we get from this big map to this, having every focus right down on exactly where we are and bringing them in by the hundreds and bringing them in by the thousands? That's our challenge. That's what we want to do. Even to the point that they bring them right down here where we are in Sampson or Nash County uh, or Wilson County or Harnett County, bring us right down into where we are tonight, our little business. You know, there's millions and millions of other entrepreneurs in the world that have websites that are promoting their business on the Internet. So what are you going to be able to do to bring those folks to come in and see you individually when it's such a big world out there? But the good news, the way that they do bring you in, is that you've got a good level playing field no matter how uh, how uh, how big your business is or where you're located. So take a look at this graphic and let me give you an idea of how it kind of works in case you hadn't thought about it. 
this uh, this lady right here is you, represents you and I, and this uh, these two hands down here, the fellow sitting at his laptop and the lady holding her telephone is the rest of the world that are shopping. They're sitting there on their two devices, telephone or laptop or desktop, looking for information how to get in touch with someone. Well, the black uh, tube across the type top is like a water pipeline, just a big, big pipe. And information is going back and forth through that on the World Wide Web. Millions of little networks are inside there exchanging information. So for someone to find your website, we need help because it is a huge world. We need help to get them down to the other end of the website and find us so we'll get that email. So when you're sitting at your computer and you're searching for something, when you type in those letters HTTP with a slash on it, or S with a slash on it, that automatically tells that internet uh, uh, search engine devices that you're looking for a website that you're looking for a website. And when you type in an email address, it's got that little at sign on it in the middle. That's automatically telling the uh, search engines and the uh, providers that you're looking for an email uh, situation. So you label when you send the message with that basic information to begin with. And it heads down the pipeline. Now let's think about what are the different ways that, that help bring that message from anywhere in the whole world to you. Well, the number one way that brings that message to you are search engines. And I'll use Google as an example, and there are a lot more. Safari on most of our telephones, but Google is a search engine that will recognize those two sig signals, the address that you've got on them, and then any search terms, any words that you're using in your search. And they will take all the websites that they've ever looked at, determine how many words that are on those website pages that you're looking for, and, and send your message directly to a place where those words are. Maybe you're going through social media to list those words down, and the same thing there happens. Social medias are very powerful, and the search engines pay a lot of attention to them, uh, really big time. Maybe you're looking on eBay, and eBay is the, probably the single most powerful place that search engines do their searching and, and refer them to. That is, they used to be, not anymore, because now the search engines are searching at YouTube, especially Google, is finding the name of videos and recognizing them at YouTube and sending them on uh, to, a, to the uh, place it needs to be. The RFC is the raving fan customers. They do a lot of referrals that help messages get from here to there. And in our ads that we do on print, our print ads are, are different texts that we send, different emails that we send, advertisement that we put up. When we're using our the right search terms in our ads, that helps the search, the, uh, search terms find us and, and send that uh, message to us. And then there's a thing called pay for click, where you actually pay certain companies to see what the customer is looking for. And the more you pay that company to send that customer to you, the better your chances are you'll get that email. So there's a lot of different ways that, that help you be stronger on the internet and help people find you. A question that we'll say many times to help remind us is what is the best way to find customers? And the answer is going to be, we help them find us. We help them find us. So we're trying to help them find us right here in, in Nash County, uh, in Net, uh, Edgecombe County, Wilson County, Franklin County, Wake County. We want them to find us right here. So can we do that? I want to tell you, you can't. I want to tell you, you can't. It is possible for you, after you get your business up and running, to apply what we're doing in these lessons, work real hard at it uh, with your vision and your mission and your investment, 
uh, maybe having a real good webmaster to help you. Use the look and hook techniques that we're going to teach you. And SEO, search engine optimization. And indeed, using these tools, you can be in the top 18 uh, uh, places in a, in, a web, in a website search. Just like I showed you what uh, uh, Timothy uh, had achieved there with, with, on, uh, with his, he was in the top five, top five on the front page uh, by typing in uh, the legal Zoom for Williamson, North Carolina. Pretty amazing. So take a look here. How do I know that we can do this? Because I've done it. Right here is uh, uh, when you typed in Carver Equipment Company, uh, uh, or when I did this test of, uh, maybe a year and a half ago, this is the, uh, the a screenshot of the page that came up for a Google search. And Carver Equipment Company and our business was the, in the top 18 positions on the Google search. For people looking from all over the world with all those different search terms that are listed there, that was pretty darn uh, significant, I would say. Not to be bragging, not to be bragging, but to show you that you can do it. Because I haven't done anything particularly special. I have been working at it for a lot of years, but you can achieve this too. And when you have this many opportunities to capture customers that are shopping for certain things, it will really help you uh, be able to sell, to sell more equipment or more whatever you're selling or doing. So how do you how do you get that to happen? It's, it's just do the homework. Set your priorities, learn the skills, complete the homework, and things will start happening for you as well. So this is marketing, and I want to give you a five step, what I'm gonna call a five start, modified, you can depend on it to work, plan that you can start marketing and help jumpstart your business. Now, if you didn't get your hand out, so this, these, are, these are items that you want to write down. I'm going to tell you the five things that need to happen, and then the five ways that maybe you can make it happen. So, one, to get started in your business, identify the profit centers. Identify the things that you're going to sell specifically. Uh, get right down to the real tight definition, uh, brand name, different, be specific. Uh, and then list down the upsell items that will relate to those. Uh, so your marketable profit centers need to be things that you're selling. And as you add and diversify your profit centers, make sure that you have the ability to upsell and to link them together so that if a person buys one thing, you'll be able to say, and by the way, we also have this. That'll really help you. Next, I want you to identify the season or the date that you want to start selling these items. Because you just can't wait until the day that you're ready to make the sale or have to make the sale to start your marketing campaign. Usually 60 days is the minimum to have a successful campaign. So the efforts that I'm making now in my business to really push getting out a good marketing campaign during November and, and up through the end of the year is really designed for business that I, I think will probably come to me in January and February. But if I don't do that marketing now, January and February be very barren because people will have already, through the holidays, thought about what they were going to buy, and when it's the first of the year comes, they'll be ready to start making commitments. In my business, we sell very little stuff for holiday presents. In your business, that may be uh, along what, maybe what you are selling are, are, are gifts. That means you really need to be even stronger and earlier. But plan to start a 60-day campaign. Develop your pricing and understand your discounting. Make sure that your uh, asking prices are high enough to give you negotiating room. And, and put together some upsell items that will help you bundle uh, items to offer some, some baskets or, or some groups of products that will give you some big ticket sales. That's the way we get big ticket sales. Go right now and start doing your YouTube ads and, and uh, support your programs with a YouTube video. I spent this past weekend creating a video I'll be able to share with you uh, this weekend. My, 
uh, assistant is uh, editing it for me. So next week I'll be sending you an overview of the campaign that I'm mar um, starting at Carver Equipment. And then put it in gear, put your programming gear. So that's the, that's the five initial parts for your plan. So how do you do it now? Well, plan to use the website. Make sure you're mobile friendly on your pages and you have landing pages. Use Facebook, personal and business pages, as I've been mentioning. And now with uh, uh, Facebook, you can very easily use Instagram. They're linked together now. So if you, uh, if, if you uh, make an effort uh, and get plugged in and register, Instagram and Facebook actually help each other and will help you move more products as well. To stay in touch with your customers, to have fresh bait in the water, continuous activities, you need an email mailing list database so that you can very easily and very inexpensively send out information to your potential customers. Now, you may, may be saying to me, Steve, I don't need to do that because the people that, that uh, see my Facebook ads, are, the, are, are uh, a lot more people will see that Facebook ad than they will my email. Well, that's, that's a very bad strategy to have because email marketing is a whole different tool than Facebook marketing is. The email marketing goes directly to that customer. You know they're getting that email, and you're able to put links in your email to get them to certain landing pages. On Facebook and uh, some other social media, you're not able to put that web page uh, link in there. They want you to. Uh, they want. They want your customer to come back through their platform. So email databases are critical for you to easily and continuously stay in touch with your Raven fan customers and other folks. Use other social media, uh, uh, Instagram, eBay, Craigslist, Pinterest. Uh, no, no holes here. Whatever you feel most comfortable doing. I do like to uh, recommend that you start with Facebook and master that because it's easy to do and I, and I know that it's effective. From there, you can go other places. I want you to be serious about getting your YouTube videos out there and have your own YouTube channel. That's just like having another uh, web uh, site to, to help customers find you and people are finding those, uh, those YouTube channels. It's incredible how powerful that they are. So as promised in the uh, two earlier events, I'm going to keep my promise to you right now. And I don't know how I did that, but I did it. So let's see. Hmm. I've mentioned Raven fan customers a lot. And you just got to have Raven fan customers develop on their own. You can have regular customers, loyal customers, good customers, devoted customers, but that won't make them a Raven fan. There's only three things that have to be done, and that will work, but only if you do the three things. And these three things I'm going to mention to you will just have to become part of your DNA and the way that you manage your business. Uh, when Every time you have a chance, you will remember this, use it, and you will see a benefit from it. So as promised, I will teach you how to create raving fan customers by using brain seeds. Brain seeds, it'll be a little graphic to begin with, but you'll get over it. So where are your raving fan customers? You've been treating people good, but they're hiding. You can't find them. You just don't see them. You don't know who they are. A few weeks ago, I had a fellow from Connecticut call me and said, Steve, I did business with you about four years ago, and yesterday one of my friends came by and uh, uh, was looking at this piece of equipment I bought from you, and I gave him your, all your information, and I got his email address and all, and I want you to give him a call or send him an email, and I believe you can get, get some business from him. That's what Raven fan customers do for you. And I see this happen so often. Two days ago, I got an email from a customer that said, Steve, I really have enjoyed what I purchased from you and the way that you treated me. 
Uh, I've just recommended you to one of my customers. He'll probably call you later this morning and buy a uh, sweet potato digger from you, a potato digger. That was that same digger that you saw me advertise the other day that I had that information handy. I know that Raven Fan customers exist and do good things for you, but you got to create them. You maybe think you've done everything it takes, but you haven't until you hear this lesson now. You don't have to plant raving fan customer brain seeds. And to graphically illustrate that, I would recommend that you just picture yourself with a shovel and digging a hole in your customer's brain. Cut right down through their hair, right into the scalp and skull, and go right into the brain and open up a space so that you can sprinkle raving fan customer brain seeds down into their head. Yeah, sprinkle these little things that look like Rice Krispies right down into their head. And it will land on the brain, and then it'll have a chance to grow and start bringing you results. Well, that's pretty graphic, I know, but what's the reality here? How do we actually plant those seeds? Step number one is a three-step process. One is we get them planted. Two is we nourish them a little bit. Three, we come back and water them and then we get our fruit. Number one, you must make a pledge, a pledge, personal pledge from yourself, and you say to that customer, I'm going to do everything I can to see that you're 100% satisfied with our products and services. Got that? I'm going to do everything I can to see that you are 100% satisfied with our products and services. When's the last time a business owner told you that? Maybe never. It is significant, and when a, a, an entrepreneur sends this to a potential customer, they hear it. They hear it. And then you follow up that sentence with this one, step number two. You'll be so pleased that you did business with us that you will want to tell your friends and family they should shop here as well. Two simple sentences that says, I'm going to do all I can to see that you're 100% satisfied with our products. And you're going to be so pleased that you will want to send your fa your family and, and friends and neighbors to come do business with us too. Yeah. You heard that lately? Well, let me tell you, for over 20 years, we've used this statement in my, my bricks and mortar businesses, my managers, my salesmen use it. Every time we send out, out an email, uh, we include this in the email to keep this on the customer's mind that FarmerEquipment.com is interested in 100% satisfaction. Because a long way, but you've got, to, you've got to keep pounding it in. Every time in chance you have a chance to share that with a customer, you need to do that. And it will make a major difference. Now, we thought we were coming off of the big COVID, and I think the big part's over. But you know, COVID, we're still in, being impacted by it. COVID was really good for my internet business. Uh, it really was. It was It was good for my teaching business because more people started coming to the internet. And it kind of waned off a little bit, and, and indeed I can see that. But I'm holding on to those customer bases. I'm still enjoying the benefits of that flood of customers that we had to come in. But you know a lot of people and a lot of businesses that had to go out of business because of COVID, and indeed right now, they hadn't been able to come back. Those businesses that made three different changes, or that when we open up a new business now, if we take some things into consideration, it'll help us survive the next time this situation comes around. So with our First of all, we have to reconnect. If you were in business and you lost connections, or if you were not in business but you've lost connections, you need to reconnect with all the email addresses of people you can. Number two, in our business, you really have to you really have to figure out how to make it easy for a customer to do business with you. Easy to do business with you to get the product. And number three. Figure out some way, if it applies to your business, to offer drive-through or takeout or pickup. That way, 
you'll be able to serve that customer even if the public can't come in your your building or you can't meet them face to face. Those companies that were able to, to achieve these things, reconnecting, make it easy to do business with the customer, and have drive through takeouts or pickups, fared out a whole lot better during COVID, and new businesses now ought to remember the lesson learned and let people know and advertise the fact that, that you can do that. Now, a marketing plan, the Golden Goose marketing plan, is designed for a specific purpose, and in your quiz, and I'll be mentioning, why do you want a marketing plan? And that is to tell you what's next. What's next? Most people would say, well, I want a marketing plan just to learn how to advertise, or I want to make some sales. Those are important, but let me tell you what's more important. The sustainability of your business is going to be built on continuous business. Because there will be slow times, and there will be good times, and there will be dead times. And your business needs to be designed, your marketing plan needs to have a, a structure as, as strong as bricks and mortar, but a structure that you put together for your business that will keep you rolling, to keep you moving on, to roll through good times and to roll through bad times, and to help you in really tough times. And the way that you do that is to have a good idea and a foundation plan that's going to help you determine what's next. What's next? So let me just show you how that works. Now, you've got a graphic in your handout. It's been emailed to you, or I'll do that. the same thing here. We're going to start right here at, at, uh, at, at thinking about getting our business started and doing all the things we talk, have talked about for the last two sessions. Uh, for, uh, forecasting and getting our prices right and our different medias that we're going to use, uh, different strategies. <clears throat> Next week, we're going to talk about uh, getting our uh, target customer groups so we can aim our ads at the right places. Uh, then we're going to make sure we're doing our look and hook campaigns good. That is, everything needs to look good and we need to have a hook, a call to action in our ads. <clears throat> we'll have a grand opening or a soft opening then a grand opening. And then down here, we're going to start our merchandising and actually make some sales. And as we're selling, we're going to be seeing them, by the way, as often as we can and close some deals. And there is that golden egg right down at the bottom. We made a sale, make it a deposit. That is great news, right? Absolutely it is. But that's just half of a marketing campaign. Getting ready, getting up and running, and getting started, getting our ass going out bringing the customers in, making a sale, having some money in our hand, and make a deposit. A lot of people stop there. That was their goal for marketing, is to get that money in your hand. But I got to tell you, that's only half the story. It's only half the story. The rest of the story is, is here. Making that one sale is not going to keep you in business. Here's what's going to keep you in business. First of all, maybe you uh, made a sale and did you create a relationship with that customer? Or maybe the customer went all the way through the process and got down and talked to you about it right up to the nth degree, and you tried to negotiate, but you couldn't close the deal. But I want to tell you, you're still a winner because you had a chance to create a new relationship with that customer Maybe you couldn't close the deal today because you didn't have exactly what he wanted or the pricing wasn't right or whatever reason. But the most valued asset right there besides you closing the deal and getting your money out of his pocket was the fact that you're creating a relationship with a new potential customer. So both of these customers, either you sold or you didn't, but here's the must. Here's the must. We need to get the database information from them. We need to get their contact information and put it into our database. Their name, address, email address, cell phone number, what, what they're interested in in the future. That's the information that's going to help you stay in touch with them. But let's say that you did make the sale, and right after, at an appropriate time, it is imperative that you follow up with your customer after you close a sale. 
you follow up with them so that you'll be able to say to them, thank you so much for doing business with us. And I do want to remind you that I want you to be 100% satisfied. Thank you for doing business with you. And I do want to remind you that we want you to be 100% satisfied. Bingo. Remember the Raven fan customer brain seeds? The very minute that you reminded them that you're following up to see about their satisfaction, their brain automatically clicked into what you had said before. It's true because they will be saying, well, he's doing what he said he was going to do to see if I'd be 100% satisfied. Now, I need to consider referring him and your business to all my friends and customers in the future. And the human nature in us will make it happen. Because this is what we call the magic marketing moment. Right here. The magic marketing moment. That's when you have a chance to speak with a customer and say to them how much you appreciate the chance either to make the sale or to work with them. And then these words need to come from you. Now, tell me about when it is you're probably going to buy something else and what would it be? Or did you say that your sister or your cousin was in the market for this or that? Or what else do we need to stop that I'll be ready to make the next sale to you? That's the magic marketing moment where we learn what's next. And that's the magic marketing moment when you told them you're following up, that you water and cultivate those raving fan customer seeds. They don't germinate and bring fruit. And the fruit is the information that helps you know what's next. What's next? So as you can glean that information from your relationships with your customers, they will understand that they are going to be helping you with future business because you will mention to them, I really appreciate it and I hope you'll recommend us to your friends and family. And they will if you followed up and you've given them good service and a good product. What's the alternative? The alternative is to lay awake at night as a new entrepreneur and wonder if you don't have enough business to be in business next week or next month. I've I've sit in my uh, I've laid in my bed at night when I was a younger man and and, and cried in worry was I don't lose my business and have to let my employees go because it was a rough patch and I just didn't have the confidence to, to, to feel good about the fact we were going to make it. Young entrepreneurs and small businesses go through some tough times. All of us do. But when you can put in place a marketing campaign that gives you a good customer base of repeat business, and you're constantly gleaning new information from your customers, and they're constantly referring other people to you, you're going to be able to sleep at night a whole lot better. You will know that things are tough right now, but I've got confidence that if I stay with the plan, I'll survive this thing. And, oh, yeah, I may not be as fat as I want it to be. It may be money lean, but I'll, I'll survive this thing until the next good cycle comes. Now, I've lived through 10 cycles now in business. This past one in the COVID times I thought was going to be the very worst. I thought I was gone. But immediately, people jumped on the Internet and started doing business, and it was just amazing. I want you all to have that same experience. You won't have it unless you've got a good marketing campaign, because when people jump on the Internet and start shopping, you got to have your ducks in order to help bring them to you instead of going to all the other millions of people that are out there to do it. So, yeah, we are small businesses in a rural area. But my friend, you can be as powerful as anyone in any place in the world by doing your homework and getting your business in place. Okay, that's the marketing plan. Now let's just kind of take a fast look. We're going to start here. This plan, notice the arrows going around. That indicates that we want everything to help us keep rolling on and keep going forward. 
we're going to always connect our dots in a circle because we want to roll on and go forward. And after we make the deal, we always want to go right on to the next day knowing what's next or having a good idea what you need to do next. And then next week or the next time we get together, we're going to talk about targeting certain customer groups because they'll be the easiest ones for us to make initial sales with and the easiest to stay in touch with for the least amount of money. And then we're going to always remember, by the way, that means we've got to have upsells to be able to stack our profits so we're going to put some uh, marketable profit centers in place that help us do that. And then we're going to enjoy making a sale. And if we're not going to make the sale, what we're going to get out of it with that customer is their, their name and address and email address so that we can put their names into our database. So very important. And then we're going to make our deposit. But what's the first thing we do after that is to record that information. Record the contact information for the customer. And then that magic marketing moment. This is in your quiz, so remember this. The magic marketing moment is when you approach the customer and get the information you need about what they're buying or recommendations for future stock or information about uh, other prospects that you can put into your what's next plan. In other words, the customers are going to tell you what you need to be doing. They are the boss. But you've got to learn to listen to them and ask the right questions to enjoy the what's next part. Hold on to that. It's real important. Let it sink in. Our marketing plan needs to be a work of art in our eyes and in the eyes of our customer. So let me share with you just some facts. Most Advertising and marketing money is wasted. So many billions of dollars are being spent. So I want to tell you, my friends and associates, that 95 or 99% of marketing money is wasted. And now tip for you, who is absolutely the very worst person that you can take advertising investment advice from? Uh-huh. Who is the worst person you can take advertising investment advice from? Well, let me tell you, it's the person selling you advertising. <laughs> because, because they have an interest in a company making money and being profitable. But which company is that? Their company. It's okay. That's what you get paid to do. So here's my news to you. You always remember that the only marketing plan that is really designed to help you make money is the one that you design. So they will offer you, just like in your page here, you spend X amount of money here or X number of ads. The more you spend, the more you get. And that's very true. That's bundling. That's what we're going to do. But don't buy somebody else's plan if it doesn't suit your plan. You want to know what your budget is and how you're going to use it. So very important. And remember that you can't get a return on a marketing investment if you don't invest anything. So you don't have to spend a little money to see that return come back. So sometimes not a lot of money, and I don't give you, and I already have tons of tips on ways to get out here and get to running without spending hardly any money at all. But there will be a time when you have to make some investments. And I want you to make them smart, not to waste your money. So, number one, you need this foundation, and I'm really pushing this, and I'll always push it. Try to do offer more than take it or leave it. Offer your customer some options. Now, let's talk about it 27 times, Ruben, and I'll show you how it works right quick. Remember I said Customers need to see your product, your image, your business card, your web pages nine times before they make a significant purchase from you. They may call you up ten times. They may want to see this or see that or see that. They've got to gain that confidence level, and there's lots of ways you can do that. But if you're just out here advertising and it's brand new and you haven't ever had a chance to show them this or that, and you're working with media ads or print ads, or signage, they're going to miss seeing whatever you're doing at least two out of three times. 
nine, maybe more. So three times nine is 27, which is the basis for a long-term uh, plan. Now, I've used this plan for a number of years and it's helped save me 75% of the money I used to spend and double my sales at the same time. So when I design a plan, I'll look at making sure that my potential customers are going to see it, uh, have a chance to see it 27 times, knowing that they probably won't see it but nine times at best. So I'll run ads all the time, different kinds of ads. I want to keep these ads cost as down as low as I can, but I want to be out there, not with big fancy ads, just general reminders to my regular customers that I'm here and I'm there. That's where social media can work out really good to you because you can send those social media ads out almost zero cost. But I would plan that. I'd look at my calendar, what my dates are, what my goals are, and then assign dollar values for what my ads are going to be. So in doing this campaign that I'm using as an example, I don't have some uh, uh, $5 ads and some $10 ads, and at the end of the 27 uh, ads campaign, I will have averaged uh, spending uh, a total of $270 in this campaign with those 10 and $5 ads. Okay, you see that? This is a continuous marketing plan. Remember, marketing is the big picture. It's what we do continuously. Now, I've got something I want to do. I want to introduce this new product. I want to introduce this new program that we're going to start on this new class that we're going to be doing. So I need to put some bigger, more impressive, better looking ads to catch people's eyes. Maybe put some photographs in them, increase the size of them, increase the number of times that I've budgeted or, or boosted. So I really would need to do this uh, to the tune of with 55 and $125 ads. And if I do that for the 27 times, that would cost me $2,465. And that's a lot of money for old Steve to take out of a, a marketing budget. I probably would not do it. But if I was brand new entrepreneur and I didn't know and just felt like I had to do it because Steve said the 27 times rule, you, you need to be out there 27 times. Well, you listen closely right now because I'm going to show you that if I, if I have my continuous advertising, low-budget marketing campaign out there, when I'm ready to come forward with a hard-hitting, targeted advertising campaign, when I'm ready to come forward with a hard-hitted, targeting advertising campaign, I can save a lot of money. Because if I had my continuous ads, letting people know who I am. When people saw my, my larger ads, they would recognize that I am uh, a, here to stay. They can look at my large ads and trust me, they don't have to see it the 27 times times. I don't have to put it out there. I can actually bring it back down to showing it to them the nine times. That's right, because the base for, for um, trust is there so I can mix in the expensive ads with my regular campaign and only increase and only have a campaign that costs me $750. And it probably would be more effective than the one that was going to cost me $2,465. We've just saved $1,715 and have got a chance now to make some profit because we're spending 750 instead of 2465. That's the 27 times rule. It's really amazing on what it can do for you as a new business. So keep it in mind, and when you get ready to start an advertising campaign, let me know if you have questions, and I'll, I'll be glad to try to help you with it. But now I've just told you the good news about the 27 times rule. But now let me tell you the scary, better news about the 27 times rule. What completely destroys that rule? 
what blows it away and makes it not look so good, even though it's a great rule and it's very effective. But there's one thing that destroys that 27 times rule, and that is that raving fan customer. The raving fan customer can tell you about something one time, give you the details on it one time, and you're out to go visit that store or that restaurant, buy something based on that raving fan customer's recommendation. Forget about the 27 times rule. Uh, I just need raving fan customers. Fact is, you need both. The 27 times rule is what brings in new customers. You don't be doing a lot of bringing in new customers. But once you get them in, if you have developed raving fan customers, they will bring you a whole lot more business than any marketing and advertising campaign you can do, especially in tough times. So that's why the raving fan customer must be a must because they really don't cost you anything except some time, customer service, hospitality, and caring about creating a relationship. Now in our marketing campaign, I always want you to tell a story. That's why I was em emphatic on showing you the, uh, the, the uh, your classmates how much uh, information they're sending in and, 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 and telling their story and their ads. So very important uh, to do that. Because when you tell your story and people start getting to understand more about you, it has changed the way they feel, the way they think, the way they act, and the way they behave. And generally, if it's a good story, that behavior will add up to them giving you your money out of their pocket. Makes a world of difference. Become human in your ads. Become human in your presentations. Talk about your pets. Talk about your children. You don't have to name them by names, but create a feeling that a, the people, your potential customer, are doing business with you instead of a web page. They're, they're helping a family. They're helping a small business person. Uh, be proud of, of what you're doing. Use, use photos that create a smile and, 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 and where you see something more than just an image, but you see a story in what people are telling to you. Uh, you know, if I was starting my, I, I used to have a, a huge long morning business uh, for about 12 years, and I, I didn't know then what I know now. If I'd have known that, I would have used those images like this and told people, I know how to cut grass. I started when I was nine years old. Put some good pictures up there and such as that. Create a story. Create a, a history. Uh, give them a smile. Let them know that you're there. You'll be the person talking to them on the telephone. So many times I'll answer the phone and say, this is Steve Carver, how can I help you? And then what comes right back to me is that someone somewhere in the United States will say, are you the fellow in the video? Are you the one that's got 14 grandchildren? Are you the one that was riding that tractor? It is amazing how people will relate to an image or hearing a voice, especially in a video, but also in photos, that if you share that, it gives you a jump start on your competition. Don't make any difference how pretty you are, because I'm a shiny example of someone that's ugly, 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 can still do business. I just can't imagine what I'd do if I had a Robert Redford look, good graces alive. I'd probably be down in Florida on a ship or something. <laughs> but at any rate, or maybe folks don't want to do business with Robert Redford. They want to do business with old Steve O. They want to do business with Tim over in, in uh, Williamston. Uh, folks that got an ugly face but a good smile. Isn't that right, Tim? That's the way it works. <laughs> so and this picture has always just kind of turned me on. I think it's fantastic for entrepreneurs. This is the classic entrepreneur. There's a face, there's a product, there's a price, and there's the image of available inventory, and those empty crates are telling me he's doing some business. The story here, though, is when this, I forgot where I found this on the Internet. The story was all about someone pulled up on, in a great big car, a real expensive car, a lady got out of it, and she went over and she uh, had bought eggs from this fellow before. And she said, how many eggs you got left there, whatever his name is? And he told her. 
And she said, well, if I could give you 50 cents per egg, it would add up to $25. i tell you what, I'll buy all your eggs if you'll sell them to me for $17. Hmm. So what's the rest of that story? Well, the human side of it is there are people out here, my friends as entrepreneurs, that will look at you as someone just getting started, feel like you're inexperienced and maybe disadvantaged, maybe operating on a shoestring, and indeed just need to make a sale to try to make ends meet. And instead of paying you 50 cent per egg and maybe even giving you a nice tip and bonus and make you feel really good, they will try to cut you to the bone and care less about whether you make a dollar or not. Know those people are out there. I deal with them all the time. I even have people call me up and lie to me about wanting to return something they didn't even buy from me. Happened this past week. $900 worth. But I did my homework, found out they were who doing me, and just didn't, didn't, didn't take the bait. But this gentleman right here is sitting here making a living, selling his eggs for $0.50 cent a piece. When you pull up there to do business with him, or you don't pay him the $0.50 cent per egg and then maybe give him a 2 or $3 tip, that's the difference in being a giver and a taker. And members of the Academy of Associates and Entrepreneurs, that's the way we're going to run our business. And we don't know that there's some other folks out there that don't do it, but we are smart enough to know that they are. Therefore, we don't keep our standards high. We don't sit up straight in our chair, keep our hat on, and smile at people. That's why this image is here. But the rest of the story now, the rest of the rest of the story is, if you don't get your card out there where people can see you, you're not going to do any business. And I bet that if it was a rainy day, this gentleman would have a, a canopy he'd be sitting under because he looks like he's determined to sell those eggs. That's the way I would be. Because if you don't put your, your material out there in front of people, they're not going to know you're there. And when you say and come complain to me, oh, I've had an awful week, it's been raining, 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 I'll remind you of this story. Fellow in New York City selling hot dogs, selling for a man that every time it was got cloudy, he put his, his hot dogs back in the stand. And the people that worked for him didn't make money those days because he said he can't do business when it's raining. So this fellow started his own business. He got in some push cars and put some umbrellas over them. And he cut the price from those hot dogs from $0.10 cent a piece to $0.05 cent a piece and became an instant millionaire in New York City a long time ago. His name was Nathan. Nathan's Hot Dogs, you heard of those? Long story, read the history on that old boy. So the entrepreneurship, keeping your cart on the street and pricing for a reasonable profit, because Nathan was making good money at five cents a piece. So taking advantage of the market, and the competition being lazy and not willing to stay with it. That's a story. Be willing to tell your story, but most importantly, be willing to learn from other stories. Good story going on right now in Clinton, North Carolina. Uh, this is Jessie right here. She uh, attended our classes a few years ago, started a, a business uh, making soaps and lotions. Uh, this past uh, few months, she opened up a second business, the second bricks and mortar business, right in downtown Clinton, and I understand is doing really well. So proud of her. Remodeled the store, got a really pretty uh, inside on it, and I'm so proud of her. Now, we use two words a lot, marketing and advertising. And here on out, as I already mentioned earlier, we need to divide them for conversation purposes. Marketing, let's consider marketing the salt, preservative, kind of help us keep things fresh, right? Don't cost much money, but it's so very effective. That's what our marketing campaign does for the long term, the big picture. Pepper, let's consider it the A bottle here. Advertising. Pepper's like advertising. 
we we use it when we need to. We need use it to spice things up. We know it costs a little more money, so we spend more money when we're advertising. But that is for short-term targeting purposes. Salt is for long-term marketing. Advertising is for short-term specific things that we're trying to do. The advertising is a part of the marketing budget, a piece of that pie. So always your marketing campaign or your marketing line item in your business plan is going to be the bigger number than your advertising budget is. And if you have that 27 times rule working for you, you're going to need a long-term marketing plan, which will have its own budget. So you don't go wild sometimes. You just stay steady with a reasonable amount of money that you can pay out every month that knows that's going to help you get your market out, out there. That may be the cost of your business cards, the cost of your internet, a certain amount of money that you use on Facebook to boost ads, but something that's steady and continuous to keep your name in front of your customers. And then the targeted advertising, that would be a budget of its own again. Now, remember the models that we talked about our last session? Each model should have a targeted budget that you have in mind how much you're spending on each item to sell that particular model so that you can plan to get a return on that investment back. It'll help you get that return back and help ads pay for themselves. So, ready? What's marketing? Long term. What's advertising? Short term. So we're going to start marketing today. How can you kind of kick it in gear? One, I want you to go ahead and do your mission and vision statements, promise statements. Your handouts is basically give you all the information you need to do it. I want you to start emailing them back to me as you complete them. I'll make a comment, send them on to you, make, save a copy, and we'll talk about it next time we get back together online. If you're not set up so you can do business on a cell phone, most people are, but maybe you only are operating with a landline, then I don't tell you you're disadvantaged because you can't take text messages on the landline. And indeed, let me encourage you to have a cell phone so that you can learn to do business with text. I don't like text messages. My fingers are fat and I can't, I can't send messages easily. I get confused when I'm trying to type on my little phone. But I love text messages when they come in to me that bring me orders. And I'm getting enough of those on text messages now to be able to say, I can't do without it. It's maybe 25% of my business. And if it's 25% of my business and I'm in the farm equipment business, I think it would be a huge number for you, too. So learn how to do text. Lesson number one when it comes to text. You're going to get so aggravated because people will send you a text, and there will be their phone number across the top and their important message down, the, down below for you to respond to, and you don't know who the heck you're talking to. It's just a, a phone number. That aggravates me so much. So... Just know that's part of it. So how can you help get that turned around? Every time you send a text out, up on the top line, put it from your name. Every text I'll ever send you will start out from Steve Carter. And eventually, maybe you'll save that in your file, and then when my number sends that to you, you'll know who it is. But you, when someone sends you a text message and you don't know who it is, your response don't need to be guessing who it is. You come back and simply say, sorry, please identify yourself. That's just what you need to do. And then, then once you get that number in, if it looks like a number you need to save, you can do it. But learn how to do your text messages. Let's have a name for your business. And let's have that business name, whatever you want it to be, and because you'll be able to name other parts of your business using DBAs, doing business as. And that is another handout that I really want you to read during the next week or so. 
understand how DBAs can help you two different ways. Number one, it lets you have different operating names without having to have multiple corporate names. Just as legal as it can be. Excuse me. <laughs> will a DBA raise your uh, uh, accounting expenses or anything? No, it will save you money. The next aspect of what DBA doing business as lets you take your marketable profit centers and rename them to best suit your targeted customer groups. You can call a shoe, a tennis shoe, a running shoe, a work shoe, a nurse's shoe, lots of different names. So we'll use those DBAs to help customers find your landing pages on the internet. We'll, big time, we'll get into that next session. Go ahead right now and list out that menu of products and services that you're offering because they will be your marketable profit centers. And you're going to need to list down what you're selling and offering to have a website, to have a brochure, to tell customers what you're doing. So list them down. I want you to have at least five marketable profit centers if you can. And if you can't figure out how to find five, you send me an email and give me what you do know that you're going to be selling, and I'll help you with it. I'll be glad to. Why do you need five? Because if you're just doing one thing, it's going to go south one day and you're going to be out of business. It's just the way it works. Start developing a list of frequently asked questions that customers ask you. In every business, every time you do a deal, the customers will generally ask you the same questions, almost word for word, or at least in the same neighborhood, time after time after time. It's really amazing. And that's why I say if you're in the game for a long time, you will know these questions are coming and you'll have the answers ready for them. I was talking to a gentleman in Florida today buying some parts, and he asked me about 20 questions. And I asked him just right, right off the top, of, uh, right as soon as he asked him, I had an answer for him. And he said, Steve, that's why I love to call you. I can call all over the country and ask people about this part or that part or this, that, and that. But when I call you, you got the answer for me, and I don't have to wait around and hear people hum and haw. I said, that's what, that's what being in business 65 years would do for you. He said, yeah, I guess it would. He said, but still, you're just amazing. I said, well, the amazing part is I got a cheat sheet right in front of me. <laughs> I, I, I knew what you were talking about, and I did. I, as soon as I knew what he was calling about, I reached down in my file and I got out my fact sheet. And that's important. It's a great sales tool for you, so think about that. Next thing, you'll be able to take those frequently asked questions and put them on your web pages and your brochures and be just amazing when customers are asking you a question. You're going to look like you're the smartest guy on the street. And that's going to boost your self-confidence and it's going to boost the, self, the customer's confidence in you as well. And maybe the greatest bonus, if you're hiring a new employee to help you and you're able to share that information with them, it will save them from making a lot of mistakes and then they'll present your company and products in the light that you want to present it. Let's get started on that uh, 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 presence on the Internet. I'd like for you to find me on Facebook and, and uh, let, like me. Three or four of you did this past week, and it was mighty good to see you, and I appreciate it. Uh, and so let's keep that going on. You can watch my ads, and I'll watch what you're doing. And that will start getting you a presence on the Internet. Start making friends, getting people to like you. If you don't have any idea how to go about increasing your friends number, I'll be glad to share some information with you on that. You can have up to 5,000 friends on Facebook. Use every opportunity you can to get your information out there. Like one of our, our, our associates is using uh, QR codes or uh, barcodes, uh, using your, your Facebook for your mobile platforms, staying in touch with them. You see how they're using that QR code to, to uh, zero in on the web page. That's, that's what they're good for. As I mentioned earlier tonight, uh, a challenge to you was to go ahead and find Marketplace on Facebook. 
sell something, drag something out of the garage, ride the closet, put it up there and sell it. Get used to it because as you progress and you have more products, you'll start using these. Now, I've been in business for 63 years, but today I personally put my first marketplace ad up. Why? Well, first of all, I thought it was just where people sold stuff out of their closets. But when I had lunch today with a farmer friend who told me he was selling lots and lots of material every day on Marketplace, then I learned that it was a place that I needed to be as well and to recommend to you all because it costs very little money uh, to get into place. The message needs to come across that all prices are negotiable. That whatever you're selling, product or service, yeah, you got an advertised price, but you're going to give customers options and ways to help them afford it. And that doesn't mean that you're going to lower the price. So you can just indicate that things are negotiable, which means let's talk about it. That's the message that I want them to have. Let's talk about it. Give them a clear message that they're going to have options to do that. Now, all of you right now, before we have another meeting, I want to see a copy of your business card. And if you don't already have one, that's just fine. They're very easy to make yourself, and they're very easy to order online. So figure out a way to get your business card up and send me a copy of it so I can show the rest of us, and we can start learning more about your business. And when you have that business card, it is a, a wonderful thing just to put it up on Facebook. Just a copy of your business card and what you sell in simplest terms. That is, that is generic uh, grammar school, A to Z A, marketing, but very effective. Very effective. People don't, necess don't necessarily want to see something fancy with a lot of bells and whistles to it. Here's my business card. Basically, it's got my name, my website on it. My address, mail the name, email address, telephone number, uh, and letting people know that what it is. Now, some of the reason I'm showing you this is because on my business card, one of them, I use the name Anthony Stephen Carver, my legal full name. But I've always done business as Steve Carver. But then when we started operating on the internet 30 some years ago, there was a baseball player named Steve Carver. Uh, an actor that did this, so several people that own some huge businesses. And if you typed in Steve Carver, you darn sure wouldn't find this Steve Carver. There'd be a million others in front of me. So I wanted an internet presence. So I started developing my whole name, Anthony Stephen Carver. And if you type that in on Google, I'm probably going to come up somewhere on the page. So you want to think about how you're starting your business now and what name you're going to use so that people can find you and find the message that you want them to see. Not a message that somebody that was a crook or a rapist somewhere else that happens to have your same name that captures them. They start reading about this fellow and say, I wonder if that's that guy. Don't want to take that chance. So go ahead and search the internet for how different ways you might present yourself on your business card or in your advertising and then promote it. Now you can, Take your name and use it with the SEO rules that we're going to put in place and really put a good cover on it so that, so that you'll create a good, uh, a, a good image when people search for you. Why? If you're going to do anything with a significant amount of money to it or a long-term obligation or a contract, the human nature of most people these days is to check you out on the Internet. And they're going to be typing in your name to see what comes up. Now, Tim, uh, Timothy's with us now, and you missed earlier. I put up some pictures of you and uh, about your business, and showed them how that you had done such a good job with marketing that when you type in your name in Williamston, that you know you come up with a good presentation. So, congratulations! We're proud of you. We all we took a look at you. You know. Well, thank you. Yes, indeed. You, you don't. You just don't ever know what to show up, and because and I do that with all of you, and some of you I just can't find you. There's no presence on Facebook, Google don't know where you are. Your customers won't be able to find you too, and that will be a disadvantage. 
it will be a disadvantage. So let's start working on that. Keep that in mind. Let's do a brochure. Get your information that we've talked about. Let's put it together as a brochure. Now, you don't have to print the brochures, but in a lot of the businesses, that's a very effective marketing tool because you can use brochures on, on, uh, on the Internet uh, in promotions and at your web pages, uh, in the social media. This is one of our associates uh, over in Lillington that has a, uh, a kettle corn business. Uh, she told me that once she put these uh, brochures out and started putting them around, that her business really picked up. People started calling her for fundraisers because they can take a brochure and carry it to a circle meeting or take a brochure and share it with other people very easily. So everybody don't exchange emails. So keep that in mind. This may be a, a tool that's very good for you. When we go to trade shows where lots of people are coming, they're not looking us up on the internet, even though they could on their cell phone. We want some brochures to put in their hand. But on every print thing you do, just like Judy did down here, make sure you got your phone number and your email address right there so people can go over there and take a look too. That's the 27 times rule, and that's why you need to do it. Next, we're going to have a list. Boy, I'm going way over. I apologize for that, but I got a lot of good stuff left. If you can stay with me, you're, you're good to come. Uh, you'll get credit for your uh, attendance tonight if you don't stay with me, but I hope you will. This is a, a, a important stuff, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep hanging in there. <clears throat> Next time, I'm going to ask you to come up with your list of targeted customer groups, people that we're going to go after. You need that scripted introduction uh, in person and on video, and you can do it. Let me encourage you to say you can do it, big or small, start taking those steps to do it. Remember about pricing your products, the three times rule. Uh, you can multiply whatever it costs you times three, and you'll get back your in one third of the cost. The next third you can use for your overhead, and the last third will be profit and taxes. So that's just a general rule to help you get started. Uh, remember that if you're working and selling uh, uh, services, as we talked about before, think about working four days a week, four weeks a month. That'll be a 16-day month, but everything you do in selling services is going to be related to your calendar. You need to be really focusing on making appointments that are making you money. And when you when you get down in a negotiation, remember your secret your secret weapon is the value added things that you save. You save to be able to bring up to the customer and tell them why they help them do business with you. Now, here's a fellow that's uh, marked down in history. Do you remember this gentleman named Bubba Blue? Remember him, huh? Who is Bubba Blue? Well, he was far as he was far as far as Cubs friend. That's exactly right. A veteran, a uh, great veteran, died in combat. He should be remembered on Veterans Day. A good friend of Forrest Gump, but mainly. He was the master of teaching that taught me all about DBA, doing business as. Bubba Blue did that. Now, how did he do that? What did, what did Bubba Blue know in the 80s about marketing, everything? Because he knows that ever how you like shrimp, you need to remind the customer that he can fix it any way you want it. Shrimp soup, shrimp stew, fried shrimp. I mean, he can do the shrimp for you any way that you want it. And so what does that say to us? Whatever you're selling, Rhonda or Crystal, if you make it specific and narrow it down, that customer who don't like shrimp salad but loves shrimp soup, when he goes on the Internet to shop for what he wants, he's going to type in shrimp soup. And if all you've got up there is a web page that says shrimp, the chances of him coming to your web page are enough. I don't teach you next session that we're going to take this information that Bubba taught us and show people how to find our web page by the way we name them and the use of DBAs. Big, big deal. DBAs. And you've got a handout uh, that if you'll read, you'll learn a lot. As I said earlier, most advertising is wasted and doesn't work, but the look and the hook is going to pull you through. I want you to all to become really good hookers because the hooker here is the one that knows how to use the hook 
and that's the call to action in an ad. I want you to understand that the looks are important too because that keeps them coming back, makes them read it. Good colors, good images, but the hook is what makes them want to do business with you now. That's the coupons or the discounts that were time limits that you use. We're going to do a, a list of certain buyers, common denominators, things that you are interested in, a member of, an experience that you have. You need to share that with people so that those that have a common denominator with you will stay in touch with you. They'll let you make some money, whether it's teachers or nurses or Coast Guardsmen or whatever. We want to get your business on the internet real soon, real quick. Get your sale pages working. Get your Google My Business account. Make the landing pages work for you. Have testimonials. So we start learning how to do testimonials. Uh, it, we'd appreciate you sending a testimonial into the Small Business Center and to me. Just send an email about you know, it, what, about you liking what you're learning here. And we're going to do videos with the guys. Uh, now, here's your bonus. Getting around to your bonus here 20 minutes late, but here it is. Last week, I shared with you I was starting a campaign uh, just so I could do it, and we've got that campaign underway, and it's working, uh, where we're going to uh, be selling certain equipment. We've got it all laid out. I'm going to be able to send to you uh, before the end of next week the compiler package. Matter of fact, this will probably become a webinar in itself about how to build a marketing campaign. So we're uh, very much into it and working towards it. I worked this weekend on doing the video to go with it, and I'll share all of that with you next week, hopefully. Lots of information. It's hard work. It takes a lot of information to put it together. But this is basically what the final product looked like that we're promoting, which is a, a bundle deal, that a deal that's good at, through December 28th offering a very special price uh, to customers and uh, talking about a lot of different things on these ads that I'll explain to you later. But uh, it'll give you a good basis of how to, how to put it together and make it work. Every chance you have, be the best person you can be. It'll really help you. Charge your battery this weekend. Uh, take time out to charge your battery to be with your family. It don't hurt to pray to help you get your business started out in the right way and help customers find you. I certainly rather have Jesus on my side than the other side. Of course, I don't know that he's ever on the other side. Find your strength in your faith or your music or your friends, but do it. Remember the magic marketing moment. That's when you ask the customer, can they tell you what they're going to buy next? Who else might be in the market? what other material or service you might need to offer. That is the what's next in your business if you're listening. So thank you so much for hanging with me. Y'all been a great group, uh, been with us all the time here. We'll stay on board as long as you'd like. You can turn your messages, uh, or your microphones on and, uh, and let us know. Let me mention that several of you have come on board. Lisa, I'm so glad to have you on board with it. If you can hear me, can you? Uh, do you have your mic where you can turn it on and talk to us? Hi, Steve. Hey there. Where are you located? I enjoyed your presentation tonight. I made it through. Some very good points, uh, especially uh, a lot of the old-time businesses. I haven't heard about it in a long time, and it was nice to kind of refresh those and, and take some reflection on it and how it could be applied to some of today's businesses. Yeah, it's kind of getting back to the basics is what it's all about. Where are you located, Lisa? Uh, I used to live on the East Coast, but I moved to Omaha, Nebraska, and uh -huh. my kids were born, and my kids are here now, so I'm here now. Well, good. We're so glad to have you. I hope you can go to chat and give me your email address so I can send you a copy of our video and the handouts that were related. If you can do that, I'd appreciate it, or email it to me directly. Yeah, I'll do that directly. All righty. Thank, well, thank you. you so much. Glad to have you on board. Rhonda, how about your uh, comments? We're glad to have you with us tonight. Hey, hey. Steve. Uh, Sue Rhonda? Yeah, go ahead, Rhonda. 
Oh, I enjoyed everything. I enjoyed the marketing and advertising. It was awesome. Um, Very good. We'll put you put it to my nonprofit for sure. Well, we'll be glad to send you lots more information, and I look forward to uh, learning more about your uh, your business and wish it very well. So good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarita. Glad to have you on board with us tonight. Yep. Hey, Steve. Good class tonight. Well, thank you so much. You're always uh, you know it's always good to have you here with us. I enjoy your classes. Good, Regina. You ready to get it kicked in the gear? I hope so. I'm I'm trying my best. I'm you don't send me a pic. You don't send me some photographs. Yes, I want to make sure you get some good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I went to your Facebook page, but I couldn't. I wasn't positive on which one was you. You're always with a group, so I didn't want to take a chance on putting up the wrong picture there. <laughs> also, if you've got any uh, uh, images of your design work or or uh, creative uh, things you want to do, send those too. When I spoke with someone, I was I said I thought I should too. Oh yeah, I do. I have some some sketches, but I haven't like I don't so. I don't sew, but I do have plenty. I have plenty of design um, images for you. I will send you a few um, by phone or email to let you see a few of them, okay? Yeah, just do them by email. That will save me a step or two. Okay, well, I'll do it by email. I'll send it to you tomorrow. Well, thank you so much, and hope you have a good night. You too. You have a good night. I appreciate you. All right. Thank, thank the rest of you. Anybody else have any comments? Hey, Steve, this is Tim. Hey, Tim. Hey, I just wanted to say what you were saying about the reconnect. It was like a, um, it was like commercial years back. Um, this guy was saying that he had this large company, and he said one of his first customers fired them because um, they forgot who he was. So he gave um, plane tickets to everybody in the company, and they were to go out and visit all their accounts and get back to high touch instead of high tech. So that's what that brought back to me tonight. Hey, I like that. Do you mind if I use that? <laughs> you have to talk with United Airlines about that first now. <laughs> high touch instead of high tech. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's so cool. Well, I will use that. I don't, I don't fly much. They can come find me. How about that? <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thanks for sharing that. No doubt. Y'all have a great night. All right. All right, everybody. Anyone else have a comment? Let me have it. Otherwise, we will be praying for you and for your business and family. And just hope everything goes well for you. Enjoy a wonderful weekend. And uh, come back to see us tomorrow night if you can, and if not, after Thanksgiving, and I'll be in touch with you by email. Go ahead and start sending that homework on in to me, and I can have a chance to, to uh, help sort it out, and we'll be ready to kick it back in gear. Y'all take care. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.